Alright, in this video I'm going to introduce you to the mechanical energy balance equation. Mechanical energy energy balance. We're going to do this for fluids. fluids. So what type of mechanical energies are there for fluids? So there is a gravitational, gravitational. there is a kinetic Kinetic. There's also a pressure energy. Pressure. Then we can also put energy into the system by work. Work. And finally, there's friction. Friction. And these must all sum to zero. Sum to zero. That is zero. So, what is gravitational energy? Well, if we remember that mass times the acceleration due to gravity, g, times the height of something, that is its gravitational energy. And if it falls, or it falls some distance, delta z, that is its gravitational potential energy. And I want to change one thing. I want to add a little dot to the top of the m. And this little dot on the top of the m signifies, signifies the mass, mass flow rate. And what the mass flow rate is, is the mass over time. So if we had water falling over a cliff or something, falling over a cliff, and it had some height, and what it was doing, it was flowing at a mass flow rate, so its m dot was equal to 1 kilogram, or its mass 1 kilogram per second, then its gravitational energy if delta z was equal to one meter would be would be one kilogram per second times nine point eight one meters per second squared times the change in the height of one meter. So we're gonna add one more thing and it's gonna be G C. G C. And all G C is is a conversion factor. Now we know that a Newton is equal to a is equal to a kilogram meter second squared. That's a Newton. So usually when we're doing conversions we multiply this by a Newton kilogram meter second squared. And that would cancel all majority of the units. However, what we're going to do instead, we're going to divide this side by n, our Newton, and we're going to divide this side by Newton as well. So this is now equal to 1. And we call this GC. So GC, this part is GC. So we divide all of this by GC. So a kilogram meter per Newton second squared. This kilogram cancels with that kilogram. This second squared cancels with this second squared. This meter cancels with this meter. So what we are left with, we are left with 9.81 meters, or see this Newton will pop up, so we'll have Newton meters per second. And if we remember, a joule is equal to a Newton meter, and a Newton meter per second is equal to a joule per second, and that is equal to a watt. So this is equal to 9.81 watts. So we can calculate the gravitational energy with this equation. So that's plus. Now we're going to jump to pressure. Pressure. Pressure energy is calculated by the change in the pressure divided by the density of the, of the substance times the mass flow rate. And what I mean by mass flow rate, this doesn't tell you how fast this fluid is moving. That doesn't this mass flow rate doesn't tell you how fast it's moving. It tells you how much of the fluid's moving. So if you had a big hole and it had a mass flow rate, so you had a pipe and it had a mass flow rate of one kilogram going flowing through it, that would be slower than if we had a little tiny hole that also had the same amount of mass flowing through it. So this little tube's fluid velocity must be greater, much greater than this bigger tube to have the same mass flow rate. The mass flow rate only tells you how much something's moving, not actually how fast it's moving. So let's do the calculations for the pressure energy. Let's do this. 
So the change in pressure over the density of the fluid times its mass flow rate. So instead of saying the water is falling, let's say it's filling up a tube or a giant cylinder that also has a height difference of one meter. So now this entire system is filling up with water. Filling up with water. So how much energy does the water have due to the pressure difference of the pressure inside the cylinder? So P1 versus the pressure outside, P2. So the change in the pressure, change in the pressure is equal to P2 minus P1. And P1, P1 is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is pushing on the top of this. Atmospheric pressure pushing on the top of that. Pushing on the top of that. So P atmosphere plus the pressure due to the water, pressure of the water. And P2 is just the pressure of the atmosphere. So then the change in the pressure, I'll just write this over here, the change in the pressure is just equal to the pressure of the atmosphere minus the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the water. So that just simplifies to the negative pressure of the water. And also let's assume that the water flowing out here is flowing at the same mass flow rate as water up here. So let's assume that this has a mass flow rate, mass flow rate of equal to one kilogram per second. So that the height of the water is not changing. So this hole is big enough to allow the same amount of water to exit as the amount of water that's entering. So this is not raising the water level or lowering the water level. It's constant. So now, what's the, the pressure of the water? Well, the pressure of water, pressure of water equal to the density of the water times the height of the water times g. The density of water is a thousand is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So this is one thousand kilograms per meter cubed times the height of one meter. This is one meter high times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And what we're going to do, we're also going to divide by gc. So divide by gc for the conversion factor. So gc, and gc is a kilogram meter newton second squared. So this kilogram will cancel with this kilogram, this meter will cancel with this meter, this second squared will cancel with this second squared, and we are left with 9,810 newtons, this newtons is going to come onto the top, newtons per, see this meter will cancel out with one of these meters, so that's squared, meter squared. So this is a pressure, it's a force over an area. So now, if we go back, this must equal 9,810 newtons per meter squared, and that's a negative. It's a negative of the pressure of the water, so that's a negative, actually, divided by the density of the water. So the density of the water is a 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times the mass flow rate, and the mass flow rate is 1 kilogram per second, 1 kilogram per second, and this is equal to See, this kilogram cancels with that kilogram. This cubed, this cubed part cancels with those meters squared. So then we get negative point, a negative 9.81 Newton meters per second. And again, that is just a negative 9.81 watts because a Newton meter per second is equal to a watt. So now we know the energy due to pressure. So this is the energy equation for a pressure difference. So that is now good. Now let's find the velocity of the water shooting out of here. So this, is, this water is shooting out of here, right here, at some speed. So what speed is it? Well, if we remember that the kinetic energy is one half the mass, and we're going to do mass flow rate, one half the mass flow rate, times the change in the velocity, or delta v squared, 
And we're going to divide all that by GC. So we're going to put GC right here. And again, GC is just going to be the, the um, conversion factor. So let's try that out. And notice the maximum speed that this can have is when it's kinetic energy is equal to its pressure energy. So if the water in here is barely moving, right here, if it's barely moving and it gets shot out, shot out, the change in the kinetic energy cannot be greater than the, the energy available from the pressure difference. The pressure difference. And really, what some people call, well, what it's called is, is Bernoulli's equation, where a pressure difference creates a velocity difference. So a change in the pressure will create a change in the velocity. So if it is barely moving inside the tank container, then the only way it is picking up speed is due to a pressure difference. And the pressure difference energy is only a negative 9.8. So this, the kinetic energy, must equal this negative 9.8 watts. So let's try that out. So we said that this must all equal zero. And the only thing that's happening is a pressure difference energy is turning into a kinetic energy. So this is having no effect, work is not being done, and we're assuming friction is zero at the moment. So that means, that means, one, I'm going to erase this. Oh. There we go. Plus the kinetic energy. GC times m dot delta v squared must equal zero. So with a little bit rearrangement, we get one over two GC GC m dot times delta v squared must equal a negative of this must equal a negative of that, and that is just a negative negative nine point eight one watts. So that just becomes a positive. So let's multiply let's multiply both sides by two. So this is multiply that by two and multiply it by G C G C. So this is now times two times G C. We're gonna divide both sides by the mass flow rate, M dot, M dot. So this mass flow rate cancels there, this two cancels that, G C cancels there. So then the change in the velocity squared must equal 9.81 watts times 2 times GC all over 1 kilogram per second. So we're going to assume that the velocity inside the container is 0. So V1, V1, I don't know if you can see that, V1 is 0. So that means V2 squared must equal 9.81 watts times 2 times GC, all divided by a kilogram per second, 1 kilogram per second. Take the square root of both sides, and let's do some math. So let's do this. 9.81 times 2 is equal to 19.6. Square root of that is equal to 4.43 equal to 4.43 the watts times GC all over a kilogram per second. So let's just look at that really closely now. So a watt times, so all a watt is is a, is a newton meter second times GC, which is a kilogram meter Newton second squared, all divided by a kilogram second. So this kilogram will cancel with this kilogram. This Newton will cancel with this Newton. This second and this second will cancel. And what we are left with is the square root. So that's all under the square root of the square root of a meter per second squared. And that is just equal to a meter per second. So the speed of the water flowing out of the bottom of the cylinder is 4.43 meters per second. So, so we found the speed of the water flying out. And again, this, the change in the velocity due to a change in the pressure, is called Bernoulli's equation, or Bernoulli's principle. 
So now that we have these parts down, now we just need to know what work is, and work is just work, so work plus friction. And usually we just have, whoops, work is actually negative. That's actually a negative. A negative work. So that's negative work. And usually work is just a W plus friction, which is just a big F. And with all that, that must equal zero. So that was the mechanical and energy balance equation for fluids. Notice that if we instead tilted this just a tiny bit upwards, that this would have shot up, the water, assuming that there's no friction, would have shot up to the height of this. And its velocity would have been zero right there. Zero. So if we would have just tilted it where it made the water shoot straight up, it would have gone to a height of this, assuming there's no friction. But there's always friction, so it wouldn't have gotten this high. There's always drag in the water. But you could, you could cause a pressure difference and find out how much it shoots up by this equation. So those are all the different types of uh, mechanical energies available to do work. So overall, that is the mechanical energy balance equation for fluids.